Hey, what's up everyone, welcome back. In this video, we'll continue talking about our image processing in Python. And specifically, this video will be on edge detection. So if I have some potentially complicated image that I as a human can tell where are the edges of that image, how do I write code that's also gonna help me detect those edges? Now, besides just being something cool, we also might think about why do we wanna do this? Why is this important for us in image processing? I wanna come back to that question after a little bit because I think it'll be more understandable once we've seen how we do edge detection. Okay, so let's go into the theory first because I don't wanna jump straight into the code. I think it's important to have a foundation on how this all works. So we're gonna be using a type of filter called the Sobel filter, but you don't really have to worry too much about the name. It's more about how it works. First, let's say this is our original image. For those of you who aren't too familiar with images or image processing, let it just be simple that an image will be any pixel value from zero to one. So each pixel can be one, which is completely white, zero, which is completely black, or any value in between. So we're just gonna keep it simple and deal with these black and white images for now. So let's say we have this not very exciting image, just a black square in the middle of this white background. Now, how do we start detecting the edges of this image? Because we can easily tell that's just the border of the black square, but how does a computer tell? What we're gonna do is traverse every single pixel of this image and create a little bounded box around that pixel. So to make it concrete, let's say we're talking about this one right here, this pixel, and we're asking about, is this an edge of my image? We create this little three by three red box around our image, and we apply something called the vertical filter, the vertical Sobel filter, if you want, to this bounded box. And what I mean by apply is actually very simple. I just do the element-wise multiplication of each element of the image little bounded box with each element of the filter. So for example, this one is in the top left position. This negative one is in the top left position of my filter. I multiply them together and my resulting position there is just negative one because negative one times one is minus one. Similarly, I have this one in the top middle. I have this negative two in the top middle of my filter. I multiply them and get negative two. So every single element you see in the result here is gotten by basically just multiplying the corresponding element in the filter by the corresponding element in the little bounded box. And my result is this, negative one, negative two, negative one, and all zeros. The last step here is I just sum them up and I get negative four. And if you look at this vertical filter for a second, you'll realize that negative four is actually the smallest value I can get. Why? Because we know the pixel has to be between zero and one. And that means that the smallest thing the vertical filter could output is if I only highlight these negative one, negative two, negative one, leaving everything else as zero, and that way I get negative four. So this is actually the minimum value. So we're going to eventually map that to zero. We'll see how we map it, it's really simple. So basically it's saying that this pixel in question got mapped to the value zero, which is black. So this is saying that this is a top vertical edge of my image. Now let's see the contrasting case. Let's see what happens when we consider this pixel down here, which is part of the bottom vertical edge. We create the same three by three little box. We apply the same vertical filter to this box and we get 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 2, 1 as the uh, final result when we multiply these two guys together. And the sum of the pixels in here is 4, which is actually the biggest value you can get from the vertical filter. And so we map that to 1, which tells us that this is a bottom vertical edge of our image. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. We define a horizontal filter in very much the same way. The horizontal filter is just the vertical filter's transpose. So if you imagined flipping the vertical filter about its diagonal, that's how you'd get the horizontal filter, and it behaves in the same way, just helping us to detect these horizontal left and right edges instead. Now let's look at the code. I think that's gonna help us with our understanding a little bit. We import a couple necessary modules. This is the image we'll be working with, a little bit more complicated than, that, than just the black square. We'll have a couple different horizontal and vertical left and right, top and bottom edges that we would like to detect. We define our filters. So here's the vertical filter we were just working with. The horizontal filter, of course, is its transpose. We get the shape of the image and we start creating this vertical edges image, which is going to be initially all zeros. And we're gonna fill it in with uh, values based on what we think is the edges of our image. Now I do wanna explain this code to you. We're gonna loop over every single pixel in the image. The reason these bounds are a little bit truncated is because if you look on the very edge of an image, there's not enough room to make this three by three box. So we choose to just ignore the edges, the borders of the original image in this case. So for every pixel that we can create that box around, we go ahead and create that box, which is done by this command. 
This is basically just saying, centered at the current row column I care about, create this little 3x3 three three box. Now here's the core part of the edge detection. We multiply our vertical filter in this case by the local pixels. That's exactly what we did here, right? Same thing. We take the sum of everything in that result. And this is the normalization. So realize that uh, the vertical or horizontal filter gives us values between negative 4 and 4. We want to map that range to 0 to 1. So we just add 4 and we divide by 8. So that gives us that 0 to 1 range that we need for images. Last thing we do is basically say the vertical edges image at that pixel we care about is going to be equal to whatever that vertical score is. And we need the multiplication by 3 because in uh, Python images require to be kind of stacked in three layers. Now when we finally show what the vertical edges image is, we see we got a successful result. All the top vertical edges are highlighted in black, just as we had over here, right? They map to zero. And all the bottom vertical edges got mapped to white, which is exactly what we see here. So if you compare this guy with our original image, you see that all the top vertical image uh, edges are in black and the bottom vertical edges are in white. So we got a successful result. Every other pixel in here got mapped to gray because it wasn't part of a vertical edge at all. The other thing to notice is it's a little bit hard to tell, but there's a black border along this entire image, and that's those pixels that we didn't even consider. So those we just didn't worry about. So we see we successfully detected the vertical edges of an image using this vertical Sobel filter. It's pretty cool, really. Now, I'm not going to go into the details with the horizontal filter because it's the same discussion, but the result is we get the same thing. We just get the left horizontal edges highlighted in black, the right horizontal edges highlighted in white, and every other pixel in the image didn't contribute or wasn't part of any horizontal edge, and therefore it gets mapped to gray. Okay, so what about if I want to apply both? What if I want both the horizontal and vertical edges? It's just going to be a slight change. I'm still looping over all the pixels in the image that I can create the box for. I get the vertical score just as I did before. I get also the horizontal score, except this time I map them to the negative one to one range. And then I just do this simple operation, which is uh, square the vertical score, add that to the square of the horizontal score, and take the square root of everything. So you can think of this as some kind of averaging operation, which is going to give me both vertical and horizontal edges. And the result here is that I get the vertical and horizontal edges of the image highlighted in white. All right, now I want to look at what happens if we do it on a slightly more complicated real world image, right? So let's say I have this mouse. So I have mouse.jpg. I'm going to cast it to black and white to keep it simple, because since we've been doing it with only black and white images, but you can do it on the original image too. So I have this gray version of the image. Now I do the same exact code. This code is the same. It's not different at all. It's the same exact code for the um, vertical and horizontal together filter that I was using up here. If I do that, I get this image, which is really cool. As complicated as this image were, there was lots of different shades of gray in here. There was whites and there's blacks. This was able to do a pretty good job in not a very long amount of time of getting me the basic um, edges of my image. And notice there's no clear cut like horizontal and vertical here. There's rounded edges here. Um, there, not everything is following a straight line, but it was still able to basically get me the edges of my image. Now, to close the video, I want to talk about, again, going back to the initial question of why would I even want to do this besides just being something cool I can do? Well, it's going to come back down to data storage. So if I look at this original image, there's a lot of different nuances I need to store, right? There's different shades of gray here. I need to store all that information if I want to recreate the image exactly. But a lot of times in image processing, we don't need to store the exact version of the image. We just care about the basic shape of the image. That also means we only care about maybe the edges of the image. Notice here in the edges of the image, everything is basically black and white, right? We can map it to black and white to basically retain the edges of the image. So having only black and white, let's say I only store the location of the white pixels in this image, and the black pixels are assumed to be anything that wasn't mapped to white. I can basically compress the image. I can store it in a much less amount of data if I'm short on data or something, or if I have millions of these images to store, versus if I had to store the entire image. So we see that edge detection can be used as an image compression technique that can make your whole system more efficient in cases where you don't need to maintain all the integrity of the image. Okay, so that's why we care about edge detection. And this is how you do very, very basic edge detection using the Sobel filter, the theory of which we went over. So if you guys have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments below. I hope you learned something today, and please like and subscribe for more videos just like this. See you next time.